All right. Well, we are here at the Brit Festival. We've just finished rehearsal, our dress rehearsal for tonight's performance, a water-themed performance. We have uh, two works, one a classic work uh, that is an orchestral favorite, Debussy's La Mer, or The Sea, and a piece that has become a cult classic very quickly. It was written just about five years ago, and it's called Become Ocean by John Luther Adams, and we're pairing those two pieces together uh, for, as I said, our water and oceans themed performance. Oceans, oceans 2, as we're calling it. Oceans 2. Right? Slash Shark Week. It's also a Shark Week, and, and also I'm here with my very dear friend and Brit Orchestra second hornist, French horn. That is Joanna Yarbrough, who, who uh, what is this your this is your fifth, fifth year? Fifth, this is your fifth yeah. year, so you're a veteran of of Brit. So the the point is, we're going to talk about the program in a little bit, but tell tell our fans, however many people are watching, is it three? I'm guessing three. It's two. Yay! Okay, <laughs> that's pretty good. Your mom, hi. And hi, mom. Oh yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Yeah, I should. Yeah, I should share it. Although she's up there. Yeah. All right, anyway, but, okay. So tell us where you're, where you come from. Um, so I normally play in Detroit on the Detroit Symphony. I actually met Teddy there because our first years uh, coincided. Teddy was the assistant conductor. Um, we started at the same time, and we became yes. fast friends. As you were the youngest newbies. member, yeah, right? Yeah, at the time. How old were you when you started? 23. That's very young. And you were 24. I was 24, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So. We had to We had to learn everything about... Because when you start an orchestra, they don't really have... There's no orientation to get you into it. They say, okay, here's your schedule for the week, right? Yeah, I felt like a baby giraffe that had to, like, <laughs> fall six feet first before yes. I could stand on my own. But. It was... Yeah, it's a, it's a tough transition, but, um, but now... We we're just talking about. I mean, in the course of a season, I mean, what, how many how many like subscription concerts do they have in Detroit? What is it? Eighteen, nineteen, twenty, something like that. Yeah, something like that. So and between that and then pops and right. movies and you know whatever special shows you're probably doing, and kids concerts. Yeah. You're seeing how many conductors in a year? Fifty. Gosh, it has to be close to fifty. Yeah. You were always my favorite, though, Teddy. <laughs> well, of course you'd say that too. on, <laughs> on, on permanent camera. camera. Yeah. Um, well, and yet that, the answer is, me. well, who's your favorite conductor? The one who's conducting right now. Yes. Because conductors well, are very, very sensitive. That's what you tell them. That's what you tell them. Yeah, <laughs> conductors are, are, are sensitive. They all, they all think that their their interpretation is the best. But as you know, I don't believe in that. Yeah. Because I don't believe I, it's not my interpretation. Well, I have to say that the first time I ever played La Mer was with you conducting. Yeah. So something about this feels very natural. Yeah. Well, yeah. we imprint. We do imprint. Yeah. I think sure. that's a big part of of how we learn music. You know, it's a, it's it's a certain age, music is very easily absorbed, and mm -hmm. stuff that we play when we're younger uh, lasts forever. But it's it's deep rooted there, and the right. interpretations that you experience then take on a certain familiarity. Yeah. So what is it? Uh, what is it like to play horn in a piece uh, like La Mer? It's obviously very, you know, La Mer is not um, like a Mozart symphony. There's a lot of stuff to do. For the horns, don't, yeah. don't have the most exciting parts in right. earlier repertoire. But this, what is it? What is it like to be at this? I mean, WC is so detail oriented that it's really just about paying a lot of attention to what's written on the page. He gives you so many instructions, um, and not everything just falls out of the horn. We have a lot of really weird open and closed stuff with our right hand and the bell um, and that actually takes a lot of practice to be able to mm. nail so um, that's a lot of fun and then there are a couple little low horn things that I don't think anyone in the audience would ever notice which is hopefully the point but for us on stage it can be a little bit scary but you so it was interesting about horn it's kind of like voice types people specialize in playing high notes or low notes uh, even though the instrument is the same correct so this is unusual because like a clarinet there's not a person who specializes in at least with the regular clarinet playing mm -hmm. high or low if you want to play low clarinet stuff you play the bass clarinet a different instrument right but in the horn section it's divided up one two three and four right now and tell us about that because it's very unusual. It's the only section yeah. that does this. Well, people always ask me, don't you want to be first chair? And I'm like, no way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no because what I do. do is I specialize in low horn, and that's the second and fourth parts are low. First and third are high. And we work sort of as pairs. So as you know, um, first and second are like a little group, and then third and fourth are a group. And then there's sort of like a hierarchy amongst the section two. The principal is always kind of the boss. 
and then third is the boss of the fourth but then second is the boss of the fourth as well so when i started in detroit i was fourth horn so i had to answer to everybody <laughs> but now i have a little power on second that's right <laughs> it's, it's funny that there's a, there's a lot of people there's a lot of cooks in the kitchen there are so, and uh, but there's also uh, unlike a lot of the other sections you also have extra horns that sometimes don't have their own part right right we, and we have one here, right? Yeah. An so, assistant. yeah, assistant or like back in Detroit, we're even lucky enough to have a sixth who is a utility horn. And what do they do? What and is assistant and utility? Assistant uh, helps out the first horn the most, and then the yeah. utility helps out the rest of the section. Well, it's funny because horns and trumpets are the two sections that w well, we, we have to take health into consideration. Yeah. We don't really worry about whether the bassoonist's mouth is tired. Right. So they don't get assistance. Right. But we do worry about the principal horn's mouth because if the principal horn's mouth is tired during a solo, everyone yeah. can hear it. Everyone knows and Just. the the rim of the of our mouthpiece is so narrow that it's a lot of contact um, in just like a just a little bit of space on your mouth. So those mm. muscles can get damaged very easily if you're not yeah. aware. How much can you play in a day at this point? Cuz you're at, you're at peak form. Um, I mean, how many hours a day can somebody reasonably actually play the horn? I mean, sitting in rehearsal obviously is different than practicing. Mm. As far as having the horn on my face nonstop goes, practicing at home, I would say between three and four hours a day. But it's nowhere near, you know, like a pianist or a violinist can yeah. do. Yeah, we get just... tired much quicker. Yeah, exactly. So uh, that's something to, to consider. So a lot of times when people look at a score, you know, it says four horns, you may see six people on stage. Right. And it's also the other one. Young composers should take note because a lot of them don't realize that it goes one, three, and two, and four. They don't realize those, yeah. those pairings. I get a lot of really fun second horn parts that I tend Way to high. feel that I'm not qualified to play. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because they don't understand that. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, that's note. a common thing. So let's talk about Become Ocean a little bit because mm -hmm. it's one of your favorite pieces. Mm. And uh, uh, so it's by a composer named John Luther Adams. Right. Now, what's really interesting. It has nothing to do with their music, but um, that is a very common name for composers and presidents. That we have two John Adams presidents and two John Adams composers. We've got John Coolidge Adams, and that's another composer. <laughs> we've, we've had him up here. We've got John Luther Adams, as we're playing tonight. Then we have John Adams and John Quincy Adams, the yeah. two presidents. Four completely different people. Right. So let's talk about John Luther Adams because. Uh, what, so you've actually played this piece before. I was so excited. This won the Pulitzer Prize, you know, four and a half years ago, whatever it was. Uh, it made the rounds after the Seattle Symphony premiered, it, and you know, it was a big hoopla because it was rare that a classical composition, call it whatever, but but an orchestral composition, people get really excited about it. it sold out Carnegie Hall when the Seattle Symphony when it sold out uh, Seattle Symphony concerts. Taylor Swift loves this piece. Really? Yes, she heard the recording. How do you know that? Because she's a friend of mine. And oh, excuse me. We, when we talked about this piece, well, we we're just talking about orchestral music. No, no, I know it because mm -hmm. she very publicly donated fifty thousand dollars to the Seattle Symphony after she heard the recording. Interesting. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Yeah. So she's a big fan. So Swifties unite and come to the concert tonight <laughs> because uh, you're gonna, if she likes it, you'll like it. I know how yeah. it works. They like everything that oh, she yeah. likes. Right. That's how it works. Yeah, that's how it works. Yeah. So okay, just, let's talk about it a little bit. What t t can you describe this piece? You, now you've you've played it more than I've conducted it. Oh, yeah, well, I've only played it twice, so well, I guess this is Teddy's premiere. It is my premiere, yeah, because it's pretty new. Yeah. I mean, it's like it only been a couple of years ago. Yeah, I just played this, I believe it was in March in Detroit. We had an American Music Festival, and this was the last concert of it. We started with more traditional American music and got into minimalism for the last week. Um, and this piece is just really a meditative manifesto, if you will. It's pretty long, and it can be really tiring to perform because you have to pay attention there's no there's really nothing to kind of grasp onto so you can't lose focus um, and you can't also as a performer allow yourself to go into the meditative state that it mm. kind of tries to lull you into yeah yeah because it's it's very easy to get lost yes and because it's because it is a minimalist composition and it's a slow build right. uh, it's funny it's very it's a very active but slow moving piece so the people are playing fast notes but the music moves slowly so they might be playing fast notes in one chord that lasts a long time and then another chord is superimposed so it's funny it, it's very active in certain parts but then other people are just supporting the chord and they're playing long tones for you know three or four minutes at a stretch then taking a break. I, yeah. I thought I'd show people the score because this is one of the least legible scores I've ever been given. 
Let's find a good page where there's lots of stuff going on. Okay, I'm going to lift this up here. Here's a good one. Can you see that? If anybody can actually see it, they should get a prize because I can hardly <laughs> read it. My eyes aren't that great. But, but, but my, what's interesting about it is for all this activity, I mean, that's a lot of writing, um, it, it stays in the exact same tempo the entire time for right. 42 minutes. So my job, I have to actually have a click track just like a, uh, a band. Right. It's pretty cool. Now, you don't have a click track. No, I don't. But luckily, I have a conductor who is very clear. That's, that's good. <laughs> see, look at that. That's very nice. All right. So what do, you, what, what do you like most about coming to Brit? Because you keep coming back. Yeah. So what 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 do you like most? What what would you say is the reason that a musician comes back? Yeah. Um, it's a really great way to play a lot of repertoire in a little bit of time. Um, like back home, we work on the same few pieces for a week straight, and then we perform them three or four times in that weekend. But here, you get one take, and mm -hmm. there's um, some pressure that we don't really get exposed to back at home. We get you know multiple tries. Um, and also, it's just so much fun to work with you. Well, You're one of my nice. greatest friends. Yeah, and we're old friends. A musician that I just think yeah. is a genius. Everybody who's watching this already knows that. All, and all one person. <laughs> and, they made, and they made it, hopefully, they did, they could disagree. Anyway. Yeah. Well, that's very nice. But Joanna is one of the great horn players, so we're very lucky. And, you're and I will say, they're a fun section to watch because you are all buddies. We are a great team. Yeah. yeah. Some sections don't look like they're having as much fun as yours. Yeah. I don't know yeah. if that Isn't means that, that we're in trouble, but... Those that, <laughs> that, 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 that stick together play together, and that's what yeah. we need from a horn section. Is that right? Yeah. I just made that, that well, up, though. Well, I would say that's pretty accurate. I just got here last week, and the Sibelius was the first um, concert that I played, and the horn section just locked in. Like, there were some overtones happening when we were playing chords that I... I don't get to hear it all the time, you yeah. know? It's like, it's You're all just compatible. a lot of fun. And it's really difficult to come and play with people that you haven't played with all year. But mm. to lock in that well, and also to have a lot of fun doing it, that's why I come back. Well, she said it best. Are there any questions? Are there any viewers? Uh, we have had viewers, but we didn't ask people to have oh, okay. questions. Okay, okay, well that's okay. All right. Nobody's okay. bringing any, any concerns. Yeah. All right, well, we'll see you all at the concert tonight, and you'll see Joanna counting furiously in this, and you'll see me <laughs> listening to my click track furiously, and in La Mer, we're going to let, let, let loose. Yeah. That's first on the program, Can't actually. Wait. Yeah, pretty amazing. All right, thank you, friends of Brit.